Hey everybody, hey everybody, 2020 is gonna end. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. What's up everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph, and it's time for another top 10. Nick! Yeah. The final top 10 of this most faded of years. Yeah, dude. It it's it's almost year. over. For games, not for anything it's else. a good year for games, and that's it. It's a good year uh, in, in one way, and one way only, that was for games. There are some actually good board games. We yes. thought, um, starting off, uh, well, I was like, man, this was a quiet year, because like there weren't conventions, there yeah. were a lot of things that were different, so I was like, oh, well. And then come out, and we looked back at the list, we're like, oh, actually, there's a lot of really good games that came out this year. Yeah. Somehow, some way, miracles happened, and games still got released. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, it was, it was actually a pretty darn good year again. It was a little bit weird. But it was like, in, in terms of board games, it was still a pretty good year. I, would, I, would, I loved to see the rise, and again, it was a necessity, but the rise of like digital games and people playing digitally with like people across the world was like super, super TTS, cool. BGA, they've, Tabletopia, they've all the win. really risen up. I'm sure, you know, it's like, it's been, it's been great to see all of those platforms really supporting their own platforms, being like, hey, like BGA is like, we're coming out with a new game every day. Tabletopia is like all the time, new games, new games. And that's been really, really nice because it's kept, us going kept all of us going you know and so, absolutely it's finding so, yeah. ways to play uh zoom calls people playing rolling rights and things over yeah. zoom lots of innovation and ways and finding ways to keep playing yeah. games so in 2020 like we said some games did get released some were quite good yeah i liked them yeah do you like them i liked them well then what we should do nick we should rank them. We should rank them. People love them. We should talk about lists. which ones are best, which ones are trash. Which ones are trash. And then, you know, we'll do that. So here, ones. I know, yeah, we're going to talk about most of them. I mean, every game here, I'm going to tell you right now, every game we talk, we talk about today, we, we like, really like. We like a lot. All right, that's spoiled. We do. Stop 10. We do have to give a quick honorable mention. We do. And this is because we just got this game, like, we played it for the first time last week. And honestly, it probably, me personally, would have made my, I would have pushed for it to be on the list. Had we gotten it earlier and played it more times, we've only had a chance to play it once, and so we decided to keep it off the list, but that is Merv. Merv! Merv is really, really good. Um, it's an Osprey game, and it's got this cool way you, you activate tiles, kind of like Quadropolis style, where you're, you have a you're grid of tiles. You're moving action person around a city, yeah. Yeah, and it's super, super cool, really thinky, cool Euro game. It's gorgeous. It's got Eno tool art. It's wonderful. Really, really fun. This probably would have made our list, but we just got it. So we're like, okay, we'll throw it in as an honorable mention because we didn't want to kick anything else off the list. It felt wrong. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we'll just throw it as an honorable mention. But Merv is really, really, really good. Super good. Check it out. So with Merv out of the way. Yeah. Get out of here, Merv. Get out of here, Merv. I know that you, Merv is the type of guy who says like, no, I understand pigeons. They don't understand me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, Merv, cool. All right, Merv. All right, Merv. Get out of here, Merv. Get out of here, Merv. We got a top 10 to get to, and it's coming at you right now with number 10. Number 10. Number 10. I'm doing the evens? I don't know. Sure, I'll do the evens. Go number ahead. 10 is going to be, uh, it's a board and dice game who we like quite a bit. Another Perfect. big T game, which was the it's nice absolute... Big Oh, it was the hardest part of our marathon. By the way, we played all of our games one week. We're going to keep on mentioning it because we thought it was really fun. Check, Check it out. the card up there. Check it we out. played all of our games... 203 games in one week, and Tekenu was one of them. Tekenu is a great board and dice game, another big T game. Real good. On the lines with Zolkin, Taylor Tupacan, all those big T games that, that uh, Daniel, Daniel Tashini, Tashini makes. likes to make, indeed. But this one is cool. It's got a very cool like dice drafting system. There's a big old obelisk, Tekenu the obelisk of the sun. And the obelisk is casting shadows depending on where the sunlight is. And so there are four different colors of dice. There's brown, white, gray, and black. And so yellow. basically. And yellow, that's right. Yellow, um, yellow is papyrus. Gray yellow. is a, like a neutral. That's right. Gray is a neutral one. So basically, depending on where the shadow is being cast, the dice are all in this kind of big circle. And the way you draft them is whatever the die, wherever the shadow is cast, certain dice will be draftable and certain dice won't. So basically, if there are, is there, there's a shadow on this side, all like the black die will be really, really good over there because they're dark and the, the shadow pure. is dark. But on the other side where the light is, all the white and yellow die are better because it's light on that side. They're light dice. Yeah, black and has so, to be forbidden. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, and the, and the sun is moving around this office, so all these dice are constantly changing their like availability. Yeah. And then around that is just a big thinky game that I fundamentally don't understand, but I really enjoy playing. Those dice move around. Ultimately, you draft those dice to make use of actions in honor of the various gods and stuff. Yeah. And then you can also produce resources. And it's a super tight yes, it's thinky game, game. Because in the game, you're going to have 16 turns. And for whatever reason, there's lots of games where it's like, oh, you only have like 15 turns yeah. if you think about it. But this one, 
you can't help but think about it. Yes. It's just like you have no time. You have no time. You have 16 turns in a giant game. You need at least double that. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's really cool because you have to kind of focus on which area to build. You build up the temple yeah. complex. You put buildings out in the workshops and quarries. Do you try to get your population and happiness built up? Do you in draft cards and stuff? There's these decree cards, which are end game scoring. Uh, you can score up to three of them. So do you try to focus on getting those decree cards? So you can have a huge swing of points at the end. Yeah. You try to build out a bunch of statues. So you get these perks throughout the game. There's a lot of stuff to consider. But resources are tight, so you got to make They're some decisions. They're really hard. And kind of focus. But it's a really fun game. Um, I've really enjoyed exploring it. I've played a lot of it. Um, it's another great team, man. Another yeah. Gordon Dice team. It's another good one. Another uh. thing is going to keep coming out. There's there's another one out. There's more coming out. It's like... Sorry, right, oh, Tawat and Sue You. Tamanusi coming out. out. Oh, Ooh, Lord. So my Lord. Yeah, it's it's. they're really good. <laughs> Takenu's great. Uh, very interesting kind of dice mechanic. Um, very, very good. Good job, Gordon Dice, yeah. Very nice. So that's number 10. Yeah. To Kenu. Let's go ahead and jump into number nine. Number nine is a is an adorable same little same game as, as to Kenu. It's equally brutal, but in yes. its way, because this one is about making quilts, it's calico. Calico. So same quilt thing, making same everything. Cat yeah. game. Yeah. Is an obelisk in the middle of your quilt? And the, the sun. cats will are attracted to the darkness. Yeah, the, the cats like, travel Aye. travel around the quilt and stuff, yeah, exactly. and that makes certain uh, patches forbidden and whatnot. Hey, calico is a simple little tile laying game. It's a tiny little simple tile laying game that will just destroy your heart and soul. <laughs> Dude, because it's so very brutal. Much. It's very thinky for what it is. On your turn, you're going to have two tiles in your hand. And you're going to play one of those tiles under one of the available spaces on your quilt. Any empty space anywhere you want. And then you're going to get a new tile from That's a market whole game. of three things. That's all you do. But where you place these tiles matters because on the tiles there's one of five or six colors. And then there's one of five or six patterns. I think mm -hmm. it's six and six. Six patterns, yeah. Six yeah. colors, six patterns. And each tile will have a combination of a color and pattern. Um, and so what you're trying to do is you're trying to build out... Um, little groups of three of a color to get buttons that match that are worth points or each worth three points. Or if you can get certain um, amounts of connected patterns and sometimes in certain configurations you can attract cats to your quilt. They don't care about the color part. They don't see color that well. Yeah. They just want to see what's going on with these patterns. So you're trying to attract cats. You're trying to get buttons. You're trying to um, meet these design goals. You sort of have like, I want my quilt to look like this. So then there's these three design goals that will have, uh, they'll deal with the the patches right around them, and that'll be some sort of combination of color and patterns and yeah. stuff. So you have all these things that you want to accomplish, but they might all and it war really with a each small other. Small grid too, yeah. you know. It's like yeah, everything's kind of on top of each other and stuff. So you end up with this like, I I want to put this here to get this button, but if I do, that's going to break the pattern chain I've been building, so yeah. I'm not going to get this cat. And if I put this over here, that breaks up the design goal I'm doing, but that gives me a cat. What do I do? You know, and so you really have to kind of figure out what concessions to make. Yeah, you know what to what to do and, yeah, it's, and it's real just hard. it's tight and thinky but all it is is like place a tile game tile that's it yeah and it's like really really fun because it's so it's again it's kind of like one of those it's kind of like again another game with beth sobel art that's small but brutal is uh like arboretum it's yeah. like it's so mechanically simple what you very do. simple it's like you literally have two tiles you place one in your quilt you grab a new tile that's literally that's the like, entire game and then it's like hey if you match colors you get a button if you match patterns a certain amount of patterns you get cats and you're trying to get those goals that's the entire game. That's all you yeah. have to teach. But then it's it about just all you can handle. Destroys you. It's yeah. so hard, and it's got a really cool solo mode. Mike actually did a, a you can solo that for it. The card there for it. Really, really cool. Really simple solo mode for it. It's just, it's just great. It goes down smooth. Uh, it goes down rocky because it's so hard. It's great. It's really hard, but it's really great. Um, Calico's pretty. It's nice. Yeah, it's it's stinky, also makes a really but cool accessible pet. because it takes two seconds to teach. Yeah, it's very great. Uh, we love it. It's number nine. Fantastic game. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'm right. getting to number eight. eight. I was going to say. <laughs> our, our number eight is a uh, sequel continuation of another game, but this is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Leone. Jaws of the Leone. It's a sequel that kind of operates as a prequel. It because it helps of, introduce you into a it world. It really does. So this is the uh, the kind of like intro version of Gloomhaven. It essentially is just Gloomhaven, just much yeah. smaller. And has a really, really great tutorial. But it's just Gloomhaven. So if you like Gloomhaven, you'll probably like a lot of Jaws of the Lion. If you don't like Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion ain't going to change your mind. But we really love Gloomhaven. 
And I've been playing. We played. You played a little bit Jaws Line, but I've mostly played, You've been played it a lot of it. Yeah. Because I played through my with my roommate, and then honestly, I'd probably just want to play it with you. Yeah. Or you can play. It with we mean, we got we like got a, a little way into it, and it's fantastic the way it, it works yeah. you up. And so the cool thing about Jaws the Line is is Gloomhaven is intimidating because it's so big. There's a lot of rules. Yeah. And and just a lot of like little s situational rules and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's tough to get into it. it. It really, really is. Luckily, our good friend Shay did a great tutorial video for it. And that's kind of how we got into it. Check out that tutorial. There'll be a link in the description. Yeah, below. exactly. But nonetheless, this game teaches you how to play the game through like the first five scenarios. First five, first scenario is very bare bones, very, very easy, not very many rules. And then at the end of that game, they teach you a couple more rules. Like, okay, cool. So now in this next game, now there's like jump abilities. And this is what this does. Since so the next game, there's like You'll literally two or three be more swapping rules. out cards. You'll have access to new cards that, that will sh highlight these abilities. Yes. And then the new map will give you an opportunity to, to use them. It's like a tutorial, but video game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's one thing about board games we've talked about is tough because video games are great because every video game can have a tutorial that yeah. you can just go through on your own. But board games aren't like that. You need to be taught the game either by another person or, or the you have rule to be able book, to suss it out from a rule book. And, and that can be a lot, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so this game, and it does it incrementally, and after the fifth scenario, it's like, cool, now you know all the rules for Gloomhaven. Now you actually and begin. it's brilliant. It works so yeah. well. And on top of that, it's just Gloomhaven. The new characters are super cool. The yeah. scenarios are super fun. We freaking love it. I like that it's all new characters and stuff because... I don't think they ever would have, but it's like you probably could have gotten away with having like characters that are based off the Gloomhaven ones, but they give you four yeah. new ones that you could then just use in Gloomhaven yeah. if you want. 100%. And so it's like, okay, cool. So now this is something that even if you have Gloomhaven like we do, this is still a viable thing yeah. to get. And it's great because like you're able to teach your roommate and bring him into the fold with this nice, easy, palatable... Yeah. Really, um, it just goes down smooth. Also, the book. It's got a scenario book that has all the maps all right. in it. Real good. It's game the greatest thing ever changer. made. It's, the, it's literally makes the game take a third of the time to set up, and it's amazing. So good. Yeah, yeah so Gloomhaven Jaws and Lion uh, has done very well for itself this year. It's made quite the splash. Um, it's like, last we checked, like, it's like in the top 20 on VGG. Yeah, so Ooh. it's it's done very well for itself, and it deserves its credit. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good. It's really good. It makes it makes a really great game um, easier to get into. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, that's, and it's the fact that it's at Targets and stuff, I'm like, you might create board gamers with this. And anytime you can create a board gamer, it's a good game right there. It's a there. good game right there. So we will applaud that. And that's our number eight is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Let's get into number... No, I took it. I keep interrupting you. Seven. No, seven. Number seven is going to represent the biggest surprise of the year because I... Oh, yeah. Just wouldn't... I would never have given this game the time of day. It's monumental. I didn't give this game the time of day until you had read the rulebook and written a script for it. Yeah. And then you're like, like, dude, it seems really cool. And I said, piss off. Get right out. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're lying. I don't appreciate it. Sorry yeah. to all our British What's fans. What's for tea? Because <laughs> you don't drink it. You don't like bring it Monumental. Away. Yeah, talk Monumental. about the biggest surprise of our life. Monumental is the biggest surprise of our life because... I think it's fair to say we're fairly of a Euro game persuasion. If you watch the top 100, you would see that, yeah. We don't uh, dabble in dice chuckers too often and stuff, and, and it's just, just our style. We like more card-driven, less random stuff, because I just have bad luck, so it's, it's yeah, personally, that's a personal thing. Um, so Monumental on its face. I saw this big box with like this dude, like, Ugh, it's Heracles. Uh, like, he's like, uh, yeah. I was like, okay, cool, yeah, we're cool. doing a, this is for work, we're doing a thing, whatever, it's fine. And so I go through and start reading the rule book to write a script for it. And I'm like, oh, hmm. you're building this tableau of cards. Hmm. It's like a deck builder. And then you, you start tabbing cards and then you buy cards. And like, then I was just like, this is a deck building game. Yeah. This is a deck building game that has all sorts of production around it. Yeah. But a lot, it basically boils down to a Civ themed deck building game that looks amazing because yeah. it does have these incredible minis and stuff. And it's got this really cool way that you build a tableau of cards and then you tap five of those cards of nine to make your what cards you're using you get resources and spend resources you can build wonders of the world which give you these perks and give you these bonuses you can develop um culture uh civilization like culture policies and stuff which give you perks and bonuses and things and so like as i was reading i was like this is going to be really fun for us yeah then we played it and it really yeah, was it really fun it's super cool because you have it's a dudes on the map seeming game where you have people moving around and They're stuff but like stuff, yeah. the combat and everything is very streamlined there's no like just, rolling up dice it's just a simple if i have more people there 
I win. I take your stuff out. You can come take it over. There's a bit of area control. Majority people don't of the game die. They just go back to your home base. So you can just kind of then go back. So it's out not again. brutal no. and stuff. And then at the end of the game, like the more spaces you have, territories and stuff, the better. But you can also gain perks for exploring the lands. And so it's it's one of those games that has a lot of theme on top yeah. of it, but a very kind of Euro game. Yeah, yeah. Baseline. It. And again, like such mm. a cool way. Again, like as Mike was saying, like the way you you tap your cards is super, super cool. So you have a, a grid of nine, so three by three grid, and you basically are gonna choose to activate one row and one, one column. column. So it'll end up being five cards total, and then those cards go away, and then you fill back in, and the next your next turn you activate one row and one column. And so it's just so interesting the way yeah. you do that, and then you get more cards would then um, go into your deck and stuff like that, and so they start coming through, and it's just really, really fascinating, and it works so well. And then on top of that, like you said, it just looks cool. But from the outset, it looks like just a big minis Kickstarter game. That's what yeah, it looks like. It does. And very, it was a big minis Kickstarter game, but it's actually kind of like a, a great Euro game underneath it. It was our, our, our style of game within it, and then I really appreciated the big yes, minis and stuff, because like, oh, they are super great. well done, and it just like looks amazing. Man, oh man, this game yeah. is really good. Yeah. Super duper cool. Um, Really liked it again. Big surprise because I wasn't gonna like think about it twice. No. I was just like, oh, we're doing this for work, and then it'll be out of my life forever. And yeah. I was like, oh, I really like this. I game. wish this had stayed in our life. <laughs> it didn't stay in our life, but we're gonna buy it and keep it in our life yeah. because it's that good. So that was uh, amazing to be surprised like that. So never, you know, always don't just judge books by their cover, yeah, totally. which I had done. And then I looked into the book, like, oh, there's a surprise. It in does there happen, for me. yeah. Um, so that's monumental number seven for really us. Good. Really good game. Oh, it's a really fun game. Yeah. And it looks just looks it's, a penny, it doesn't it, man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so number seven, let's go ahead and get number six. Yeah. Number six is a uh, just a, another gorgeous little game that's smaller than monumental, but this is a I think the first flick and right. First and that only. Is Sonora. Sonora. Sonora is so interesting. Crokinole with a roll and right. Really, that's kind of what it is, ultimately, yeah. And so it's a roll and write game uh, where, you know, you're, you have different areas, you're marking off stuff, doing stuff, roll and write. You know we love roll and writes uh, so, so much. But instead of flipping over cards to get whatever you have to draw in or rolling dice to get whatever you draw in, there is a board with four, like, regions on it, and you are flicking discs to decide what you do. So yes. you have five discs, the number one through five, and I flick them. And if I flick the number three disc over into here, once all the flicking is done, I then activate that three disc, and I get to do a three power thing wherever that region is. So there's four regions here, there's four regions on your map. And, and it's like that. And so you're flicking around, trying to get your discs in the spot that you want to work on in your little roll and write spot. Right. But you can like smack into each other and your discs are one through five. Five is better than one. So you're like, oh, I really need to work on this part. I need to try and hit my five over here. a lot here. of value over here. And there's yeah. also like little times two spots on there. So you're like, oh, if I can get my five on one of those times two. Yeah, there's like these little bonus then it's spaces. 10 and it's like, it's so fun. It's such a good, cool take on the roll and write system. And then the right. roll right part is also really, really, really fun. Yeah, because all this game is like built for like combos because especially as in each area, if you start getting, you start focusing on that area and you start building down, you go get down the path yeah. as it were in one of them, you actually are working down paths. Yeah. You start getting like bigger point opportunities, bigger bonus opportunities and stuff. So you can do this thing where now I'm working on this, this area over here. Uh, that's like building these little pathways and stuff and then I got this bonus So now I can I can do an action in one of the other four sections or I can get these like wild ones where I can choose which one I activate um, And then so that will bonus there because now I'm in this new area where I'm kind of building these little Tetris shapes that surround cacti and stuff which gives me a bonus and now I'm on my little lizard space and I can X off a bunch of spaces which completes yeah. a thing which gives me a bonus to do this. Like you can, there's some turns where you just, you chain off like six different. It gets nuts. You do like yeah. six turns in a row because you're just going bop, 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 and I'm back here. It's it's awesome. And then <laughs> at the end of the game, you score each section. Yeah. And um, like in one of the pathways is for all these different things that you circled, whatever the numbers are in there, those are the points. Or these yeah. there's ones where again, you surround cacti or you make these pathways that surround cacti and stuff. It's all desert themed and yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, and it's just, yeah, it's it looks just really good fun. Too. It's got great dry erase boards. Yeah. It looks great. It's pretty. And then the flicking is just a really fun element because you, in theory, have some skill. You, you can pull off a skilled, skilled shot, right? but there's also stuff flicking into each other. Yeah. So it's also a little bit random. So it kind of blends those things really well. It's yeah. just a really fun, unique roll and write, flip and fill. This is the flick and write. Yeah. Um, it's really good. So fun. So, yeah, so Sonora fun. is great. It's 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 really like we we're like, oh, that's interesting. And then I read the rule book for it, and I was like, 
oh man, this is gonna be really fun, and it is. It's an yeah. uh, if you like rolling rights, if you like flicking games, try it. It's incredibly good. Yeah, it's really fun. That's our number six. Yeah, uh, Sonora, highly recommend it. Do give it a shot. Uh, and let's get to number five. You know what's fun, Nick? Games. German. Firebend. Oh, yes. Or yes. Finishing Time, as it's known in the States, is our number five. It's a Friedman Freeze game. Yeah. Hence the F, Fire Robin, Finishing Time. It's green. It's a game where you are trying to relax. Yeah. You're just trying to relax. What a weird, fun thing. You're trying to chill out. You're trying to finally overcome the grief and strife that your workplace brings you every week. Your job sucks. <laughs> in this game, your job literally is the center of the game. Your job is horrible. Yeah. You work way too many hours. killing everybody, yeah. You do not get paid enough. Your union is not strong enough, so you don't have the ability to strike for better working conditions. Yeah. And you are desperately trying to relax because every time you have to go back to work, which means you pull off your workers off the board and they go back to the factory, you... Get super stressed out. You get super stressed out. You get a little bit of money. But the thing is, is that you have a mixed workforce. You have you have ladies and gents, and guess what? The gender gap. The gender gap's a part of the, the game. The wage gap so is you have make less money, less money because the women aren't treated fairly and stuff. So that's another thing you gotta try to do is close the gender gap. Try to increase your wages. Try to work less hours. And this yeah. game is all about trying to overcome uh, your horrible work. working conditions. Your horrible yeah. working conditions. So when you go to spaces on the board, you can relax. You can pay money to go to an amusement park and gain a certain amount of relaxation. You can do some free relaxation by jogging in the park. Yeah. You can maybe go on a vacation if you've striked and have earned the ability to you take vacation, vacation, which you time. do not start with. And then you can also strike for better working conditions. Yeah. You gain these strike tokens throughout the game, and you can use that to increase uh, your union strength so that every time you go back to work, you gain more strike tokens, yeah. which you can then strike you for more. more wages. You can get higher wages. You can close a gender gap. You can work to work fewer hours, which means you'll be stressed out less every time you have to pull yeah. your workers off the board. And so you kind of are just working your way where it's 10 steps forward, 9 steps back, yeah, and then exactly. 12 steps forward, eight steps back oh and you yeah. go further and further and you try to like get to the end where you trigger where you, once someone has 40 relaxation it sort of triggers the end of the game the game will end with everyone going back to work one more time yeah and then whoever is still the most relaxed at the end of it wins yeah. so it's just a really interesting game that i really appreciate it's forwardness yeah. talking about just like yeah your work is horrible work they sucks. do not treat you well and you and need you to do something about this yeah exactly. yeah and it's basically saying like you need to strike for this stuff you need to revolt and whatnot yeah. I'm like man i love it's it awesome i love it yeah it's super cool and then the game itself is like really really fun it's just like work really a placement simple. spot you're like yeah i'm gonna go out here i'm gonna get some relaxation i'm gonna go out here i'm gonna get some money oh, i'm gonna go out here i'm gonna i'm gonna get a partner that's super cool and now i can take my partner with me yeah and like uh me and her we can go on a vacation together if you bring your partner it costs more money because there's two people but you get more relaxed because you're There's there with the perks. person you love. And so it's just like, it's just super, super cool. But then every single time you're like trying to stretch as far as you can because you're Before like, Before you have to go back to work. All right, going back to work, the dude, all of it goes away. And then you got to work back up. And it's just super, super fun. And again, yeah. like cool and progressive and just like rad and a super interesting theme. It's just different. It looks really cool. Yeah. It's just, it's really, and on top of that, it's just a really solid, fun game. I like it a lot. Yeah, we really enjoy playing it. When we played it, I was like, man, this is like weirdly simple because yeah. the spaces are yeah, well laid out. Yeah. It, you can know how much you're getting and what you're paying and all that. And it's just a yeah, interesting theme that I really can get behind because yeah. it's it it brings up stuff that's real yeah. in our world, you know? Like so it's, it's nice just, to have that and have a cool game on it. Yeah. yeah. It's basically saying, hey, like a lot of us out there work too much for too little and it's not right. Yeah. And I'm like, that's cool to yeah, put it out there, but right. also keep a fun light game yeah. around it. So finishing time, we it's highly cool. recommend. Really fun. Super duper cool. That's our number five. Um, do check it out. And in the meantime, we'll get to number four. Number four is a game we can never play again. That's not true. We're probably actually going to play it again. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Uh, but this is a game, a legacy game called My City. This is a Reiner Knizia legacy game. That's a weird sentence. Um, what did you say? What were they? Here's the thing. Did Reiner Knizia just design 13 games? And I said... Hey, all of these just have one rule difference. Why don't you just make it one game? And he was Good. like, okay. You're right, we'll do that. You're right, we will do that in... in make the houses cubes! <laughs> make them cubes! Um. Um, but My City is a uh, a polyominal legacy game where you're building out tiles. your city. Yeah, yeah you're, it's polyominal, you're playing tiles to that, and in every game, some little rules will change here and there, yeah. and they're broken down into, into, what, eight episodes? Uh, there's eight chapters, each chapters, with three, three episodes, episodes and yeah. so you'll play 24 games throughout Total. the campaign. Yeah, and so like each chapter will have three games, and there'll be kind of a theme for that 
chapter. We won't talk about what they are, but there'll be like different themes and then those three games and there'll be slight rule changes and then you'll open up the next envelope, which will add like a lot of times more tiles, stickers, all this kind of cool stuff. And your board will change and the whole thing will change. And you're essentially each time putting out your tiles, but then there's different rules for what you want to put next to stuff, right. stuff you're trying to get to, all this different kind of stuff where you can start all over the place. And it just, it changes slightly each time, but it is so darn fun and so yeah. darn accessible yeah. as a legacy game. It's like, it's just great. And if you love Polly Omotala games, which we love, Mike's fiance, Karen loves it. She crushed us per usual. Um, bad. I did bad. And it's just, it's just a great, it's, it's just like 24 fun Polly Omotala games. Yeah. It's really what it is. Each like, game's like 20 minutes. Yeah. And it kind of works roll and righty where it's all simultaneous play. Yep. So you'll flip over a card and it'll show you a color and shape of a tile. And we all have that color and shape of a tile for yep. the most part. Yep. Um, and it's just when it flips over, everyone has to add that into yep. your map. And But where you add it, there's some rules and stuff about how things have to get placed, but we don't all have to choose the same spot. No, so it works like a roll and write where the same cards come out in the same order, but we're going to do different stuff with what we have. Yeah, we're just trying to beat your opponents, yeah. And you're going to try to beat your opponents. And so it's super easy because all the rule changes come in little bite-sized chunks. Yeah. Like you said, each episode might, might show you a new little thing. Each chapter will bring you a few new things, but then there's rules that, that lay out exactly how they work. Yep. Super easy and accessible, super affordable. Yeah. Um, My City was really fun. It's it's the most palatable uh, legacy game out there. Yeah. It's the easiest to get done and played because it's they literally say like each chapter is three episodes and it's sort of expected that you'll play one chapter in a sitting yeah. because each game's like 20, 30 yeah. minutes. So you can play each chapter in an evening and it kind of brings it to a nice close. Yeah. And then what we would always do, we would open up the next chapter and get all excited for next week because we play it once a week and be like, oh, this is coming. Oh my yeah, gosh, yeah. this thing's changing because you're bored and everything's always evolving. Super cool. My really city cannot speak highly enough about it. Yeah, it's just great. I mean, if you're looking to get into legacy games, you want a simple one, you like tiling games, it's also not very expensive, as Mikey said. It was like 35 bucks at like Barnes and Noble. Yeah. You probably find it on sale somewhere. It's great. Like, we're literally like, we're probably just gonna buy it again and play through it again. Yeah. Like, we know what's coming, but like, whatever. Who cares? You know, we'll it's like, like, wait a year, we'll kind of forget yeah, certain things. It's and then just, uh, now we, we'll probably do different stuff because we're a little armed with some yeah, information. Like, ooh, so maybe we can like do this. better next yeah. time. I don't know. You but know. it's really, really, really fun. Um, yeah. If you've been interested in it, give it a shot. It's, it's it's really great. I was kind of very much like, okay, it's a Ryan Kinsey legacy game. Wow, great, cool. And I and everyone was like, no, it's really, really good. And then I'm you got it shot. because it was cheap, and we yeah. tried it, and we were like, oh, this is fun. And it, and it just it kept being. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, super good. My city uh, rips. Highly recommend it. It's our number four. So let's get into number three. So our number three is a roll and write version of a oh, of another game that exists. It's called Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers. It's a this dice could, this driven. This could even move higher. It's so good. It's so good. It's this so is a cool. dice driven roll and write style oh, it's so game uh, based off of Rajas of the Ganges, which is another uh, game with dice and stuff, but which we're using we it in like different ways. A lot. I love Rajas of the Ganges so much. It just keeps getting better for me. Um, so Rajas of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers, is very much. Rajas of the Ganges in a small roll and write form. Yeah. It does a really good job. Probably, we haven't played Fleet, the, the base game. No, yeah. But Fleet, the dice game, seems like it has most of whatever Fleet is in it. Um, but this one seems like the best roll and write where it, it really does encapsulate the, 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 its parent game. While still being a different game. While still being a different game. Yeah. It's its own thing, but it's very familiar. So in this game, like Rajas of the Ganges, you're trying to cross your wealth track and your fame track. Yeah. And you're just kind of crossing off as you go money and fame, which might give you perks and stuff as you cross off certain bits of your path. Um, and you are drafting dice now that will give you uh, goods that you hope to sell later, will give you access to these uh, six people that have special powers and stuff like they do in Rajas the Ganges. You can move up or down the river uh, to give you a bunch of perks and stuff and help you sell those goods that I mentioned. You can get pathways that you can build out to get to these different buildings, which will give you fame, and we'll also get to the edge of the pathway, which have a bunch of bonus actions right. that are all those things that the dice can do and more. Um, and so this is just an awesome roll and write that's all about building combos, because combos, as you combos, build out those combos. pathways, you yeah. start triggering this combo, which allows you to sell goods, which completes this area of all these goods sold, which gives you this combo, which gives you this, which moves down the river, which allows you to sell more goods. And you make this money, which moves your money track, which covers up the thing. So now you get a pathway and you get this combo and it literally goes on and on and on like that. And so the first half of the game, you start building up and the second half, you just start 
triggering everything and it ramps up in yeah. a really fun way. It gets ridiculously fun. It's ridiculously so fun. good. It's so good. It looks great. There's two different sides to the map. One's yes. slightly harder, just slightly different. Just slightly different. So it's some variability. But so it's there. it's a little bit of variability, but it's just it's dice drafting, which we re really like a lot. Yeah. It's just it's good. It's Raj of the Gandhi is very much feeling in that same universe. You're yep. doing a lot of the same stuff, but you're doing it in a completely different ways. So it does feel like a different game. Um, it's just really, really good. I mean, yep. it is just, you know, what, you know what it feels like in, in terms of like, it, it feels a lot like it's parent game, but it's definitely a very different game. Is it's like Castles of Burgundy the dice game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castles of Burgundy dice games like that too, where it follows it's like, the similar rules of what you're trying to do. Yeah, but, but it's definitely a different game. And this yeah. is that, but it's so, so good. And yeah, I mean, it's I want to play it every day. Every day, I'm like, I, so I want to play good. it right now. It's, it's so good. really, really fun. Especially like we are uh, very into combo tastic games. Yes. This one really, really gives you that. And it's if you have that in a game, like we're gonna enjoy ourselves yeah. because it just feels like we're doing something. You yeah. know, oh, satisfying. Yeah, it's real good. Rob Zagandi is number three. It's. Ooh, if you like rolling rights, you need to try it. It's really good. Yeah. Best rolling right of 2020 and maybe ever. I don't know. We'll I don't see. Know. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll have to see. But unless it's number three, let's get number two. We're getting close. So number two is a game that I kind of figured would be here <laughs> because of, of, the, of the, the, the lineage. Yeah, it was. You, you, it was it'd be surprising, like if all of a sudden, like this game's horrible. <laughs> I mean, because it kind of happened the first one, but nonetheless, yeah. this is Viscounts of the Le of the West Kingdom, the third and final game in the West Kingdom trilogy. That's two trilogies down that Shem's done, which is super cool. Shem Phillips. Viscounts of the West Kingdom is a very interesting kind of again. One thing that's again, it's like Architects West Kingdom, Paladins West Kingdom, Viscounts West Kingdom are very, very different. Very different games. Very much in the same world. Yes. Very unique. They are not. None of them are even remotely like each other. No, not like, in terms of gameplay at no, all. Not no, not at all. No. Which is very cool because now it's like they all have the same color box. It's like it's a very, yeah. very cool. It creates thing. this cool like looking thing on your shelf. But like literally, there is reason to own all three because they're very different experiences. Yeah. But Viscounts West Kingdom is very cool. It's got this kind of big rondelle board in the middle, and it's you a have circular your board. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your Viscount. They're essentially going around, and wherever you stop, you're essentially going to do that action. You can like build. You can like put people in the castle. You can um, get manuscripts. You, you can, can trade for you stuff. You can trade for stuff. And essentially, you're going around there trying to do these things. You're essentially trying to get points, but it's got a really cool like tableau system. Yeah. So you, it's the way I always describe it is it's a deck building game in slow motion. Yes, that's very true. Because on your turn, you're going to play a card onto your player board. There will ever only ever be three cards in front of you. And then base off of them, you're going to slide stuff down to the right to create space for your new cards. So things are kind of slowly yeah. shuffling through. And then when you take your turn, the card you just play is going to dictate how you move your Viscount. You have to move your Viscount around circular around the board. Yeah. And then you're going to look at all these icons that are on your cards. They're going to have money bags. They're going to have little uh, like golden fleur de lis. There's these like crosses and then hammers. Yeah. And those will help you power up those four actions that Nick mentioned. So you are hoping to get probably a tableau with a lot of the same yeah, type can. of icon because then you have more yeah. spending ability so to like do one of the those spots actions. Like you can trade in two money bags for gold. So across all of your things, if you have six money bags. You can do that trade three, three times. Exactly, so you're trying to you're trying to like group them together. Yeah. Which is a really Like you cool. would a deck builder. You're yeah. kind of trying to chain your cards, but the cool thing is is that you only play one card at a time. And if I play a card to the first slot of my tableau, it's going to be on my board for at least three turns. Which kind of screws you up at the same time. Yeah, because if you're like, I kind of want to get to, want I want to do this, this other type of action. Now, now I need hammers. Like, yeah. So there's times where you can rearrange your tableau to get things maybe off your board quicker, keep things on your board longer. There's yeah. a lot of ways to manipulate what you have, but it's ultimately a deck building game because throughout the game, you're going to buy more townsfolk cards mm -hmm. that will go on your discard pile that eventually will shuffle into your draw pile. And so it works like a deck builder, except for you're only playing a card at a time. Yeah. There's a lot of discard abilities and stuff. So that's kind of how you work it to get yeah. the cards you want. Like, I don't want this card to put it But over it's here. just, <laughs> it's, a, it's a deck builder that goes yeah, just like, like this, which is really interesting. And it's ultimately, I don't want to say basic because it's not a basic game, but it's cool that you play these cards, you move your buy account. There's only four types of actions you can yeah. do, but what you do in what order and how you make use of those cards in front of you and stuff is highly important. Yeah. So it's, it ends up being a heavier game 
probably not as heavy as Paladins, but it's on more on the level of Paladins than Architects of the West Kingdom. Yeah. If you were to compare them, I know people for want to sure. know kind of where it fits in the thing. It's close to yeah. that in Architects difficulty. Architects is the easiest for sure, yeah. Architects is the easiest for sure. But Viscounts is just, yeah, it's just really Yeah, there's a lot cool. going on. It's very, very, it's really cool. It's yeah. just fun. And it's one of those things where you're like, you play it, you're like, oh man, there's a lot to explore here. There's a yeah. lot to like get into and try. And all those town folks cards come with all sorts of abilities yeah, and Yeah, and you kind of, kind of like Paladins, you kind of almost want to specialize in like one or two things. Doing yeah. Ev yeah. a lot of everything will be very difficult. So it's kind of like, yeah. okay, what do I do? I want to buy a lot of cards with money back so I can constantly trade for stuff. It's like, it's, it's very 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 cool yeah yeah super cool game um just enjoy it highly this is this is this high on our list and we don't even have our physical copy yet it's literally coming today as of this recording it like it's going right to now. arrive but we haven't even played it physically yet and it's still that good so it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it's really great it's on game. tabletopia if you want to play it though so go play do check it out on tabletopia it's really awesome uh that's our number two though we do have one more that is just it's just it's, it's better got it's all better. those things that we love in a game the game of the year mm -hmm. i'm talking about it right now If you were with us during our Essen coverage, you will know just how much we enjoy this game because we spent a lot of time, and in the months since, we've spent a lot of time praising this game. Yeah. It's from Czech Games Edition called Lost Ruins of Arnold. I would say the first time I played this game, I mean, it was like, it's my favorite game of the year. Yeah, Nick knew straight away. Right away. I was like, I had a pretty good feeling it. about it too. And That's then it, okay. with subsequent plays, I was like, that's pretty good. Yeah, Lost Ruins <laughs> of Arnok is incredible. Lost Ruins of Arnok is, is a great game that we first heard about because it's already kind of getting buzzed because it's just got beautiful art. Um, yeah. It just looks yeah, amazing. The board is just stunning. Yeah. And so I remember kind of seeing stuff and I was like, this kind of has like a explorer, archaeology, like literally archaeologist, yeah. like Indiana Jones vibe yeah, yeah. in terms of its look. And so I was like, I'm intrigued by this. And then we had the opportunity to to do a sponsored stream and play it and stuff and have, get our hands on it briefly. Um, and it's just a really freaking fun game. We've yeah. we spent a lot of time talking about it, but this is another deck building worker placement game, which is kind of like a pretty popular it's thing. A hybrid we like, yeah. You can use it's mostly deck building, but you do have two workers that you can spend in each round. Mm -hmm. You're playing five rounds, and you're going around to discover dig sites because you're archaeologists and stuff, discovered dig sites, which yeah, will give stuff. you um, worker placement yeah. spaces, yeah. and it'll give you stuff, and then they'll come with these guardians that might um, cause you to get fear, which are sort of like burn cards in your deck that they you hope to get rid hand. of. They yeah. clog up your yeah. hand. Um, you can uh, research to go up these research tracks, which will give you a bunch of different perks and boons as Including you go. Including like assistance, which you can then tap each round. Yeah, they'll give you like powers that. or give you kind of a passive ability, things like that. There's all sorts of stuff. And like, what we've always talked about with this game is it all comes down to gaining gaining resources to spend in this area to then probably gain resources or get a perk over here to do this to gain resources to go into that you're just, area. You're just and extending. you're trying to stretch out. You're trying to stand, that taffy. You're pulling that taffy. You're pulling see how far that can taffy, go. Man. See how far that taffy can go. You're getting yeah. money, so you can buy new cards. You can buy um, like items and stuff that you get. And then there's also you can spend kind of compasses, which are your like exploration prowess. We'll yeah. say. To gain artifact cards, which are super powerful, it's really powerful, <laughs> um, yeah. and they go into your, your, they go into play immediately when you get them, and then you can cycle through. But you have to pay these stone tablets, so you need to have the right resources to spend to trigger this thing, which will give you this boon, which you hope to spend to do that. And so, that ability to kind of chain one thing into the next, into the next, to kind of work like an efficiency engine, yeah. is really satisfying to figure out. And there's basically point salad to the max like yeah. everything will give you points at the yeah. end of the game it's just like you get this you're gonna get some amount of points over here yeah. if you go over there you've discovered that you beat that guard you're gonna no, get you points flip over these here things over. if you don't flip over two of them you get points it's, like, it's just like there's a lot of <laughs> there's stuff. so much stuff where you just get points and points and points and points yeah and, points and, points and it's points. it's one of those things where it's like the first round is so daunting because you don't have many resources you don't have much to do yeah, basic so it's relatively cards. short and you're like this game is five rounds long how the hell am i going to do any of this yeah. stuff? there's a whole research track how do you get there's anyone never getting up there yeah and just because you're like, oh, but I can do, you just, you start every round, start extending. By the, no, the, the fifth on. round is like five times as long as the first round <laughs> really because is. you have so much more ability to do stuff. But it's so much of being like, I only have one worker. It's the last thing I can do in my turn. What can I do? Like, all right, I can go here. Okay, if I go here though, I can get those two things. And then I can use my system to get one more of those things. Oh, and then my next turn, I can turn in those yeah. to get this. 
But when I go up there, I'll get these two things. Oh, that means that I can now use this. Yeah. And then when I use this, I can do and, and you start just, and you can just, it's so satisfying. It is. Because you just get to keep going and you're just like, how can I eke out a little bit more? And it's yeah. just, it literally makes you feel so accomplished yeah. that even if you lose the game, by the end of it, you're just like, man, I did so much in this game. You did. I did so much in this game. I agree. Game. It's almost like if you win, obviously that's great. It's you great. hope to win, but like you will have done a lot of stuff regardless. And it's not that it's an open, easy game where everything comes no. easy. Like resources are scarce. Yes. There's these red jewels and arrowheads and stuff. And like, they're hard to come by, but you can find a way to get there. Yes. So you feel clever because you're like, oh, I can see a path here. Mm. I can see a path here. There's mm. 15 paths, but I can see the paths. And then I choose to go down them. And it's like, whoever can kind of work their system the best can can get it done and win. Yeah. But it's um it's yeah, one of the most sat satisfying games is the word is is one of the most satisfying games we've ever played. It's just you feel clever, you feel accomplished, you feel like oh, I was able to put this together. I was yeah. able to see see so stuff that I could do and I was able to accomplish that goal. Yeah. And it's just a matter of like who was able to do it slightly better than the yeah. other. Yeah. You know, and and so it's just a brilliant game and it looks Incredible. It's an incredible production. Yeah. We played an advanced prototype. It was not completed. Certain things were 3D printed. And I was like, this is still one of the best <laughs> productions yeah. we've ever played. And it's not even the final version. Yeah, it's great. It's gorgeous. It's just, it's really good. It's, it's really, really good. good. If you like those types of games, if you're interested in that kind of theme, it's really cool. It's really, it's just freaking Fun, which board games should be. Yeah. So it's our number one. It was fairly clear from the beginning. You're like, I don't know what's going to beat this because uh, yeah. yeah, this ticks off. We've talked about this more and more. It ticks off a lot of our boxes where it's like, I want to have combos. I want to have things that make me feel satisfied and clever. I like deck building. I like worker placement. Yup. 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 Theme art. Yup. 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 Portrait board. Bit of a bit of a markdown, but, it but it, we can play, play it, it sideways. It <laughs> and it, it works. The fact that this portrait actually like looks really—it does cool. look really nice. We Artistically, like it's very pretty. Style boards are terrible. Um, um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's fantastic. really good. It's, it's really just good. incredible. It really, really is. It's our number one. That's Lost Rooms are not. Ah. It's great. And that's the end of our top ten list. Please down in the comments below. Let us know your top ten games of the year. There's what more did you out play there? There is a lot of games. There's also if we didn't say your games, there's probably a good chance we didn't get to play it because we didn't get to go to cons and such like that. We didn't get to play as many games as we usually do. Oh, man, Castle of Tuscany, yo, holler at me. That's yeah. an honorable mention. That's great. Game. Yeah, it's great. There's a lot of great games that did not make the list, and there's just a lot we haven't had a chance to try yet. Also, because a lot came out somewhat recently, like Merv, you know, came out recently, and we just got, got a chance to play it. Yet. So we're just like, okay. That probably would have made the list, but you know, that's where every top 10 is a snapshot in time. So as of right now, this is where we are. Some games might change, you know, in how it goes. We go back and look at our other top 10s. You're like, oh, that game's not on the list anymore. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, how it goes. But uh, thank you so much for being here again. Down in the comments, put your top 10 games of the of the year. What's your favorite stuff you played? Down there, please. New or old to you? Go ahead. At the end of our top 10, we always like to scroll by all our patrons. Thank you so much. Y'all make this whole thing possible. Speaking of our patrons, we did hit our next goal, which was to have... Another Bing Bong Con. We are two Bing Bongs, y'all. You watching your Bing Bongs as Officially. well. And so that is to um, have another game day. So we did this earlier this year where we will do a 12-hour stream, whole big 12-hour stream. And then the next day in our Discord, there's going to be a ton of basically just online gaming. People uh, getting together, playing games. We'll be hosting some games, doing some cool stuff. And it's just a time to come together to kind of do a virtual con. The last one was super, super fun. We want to do one again. Uh, and we made it like, oh, let's have this kind of be a Patreon goal to do one on New Year's Day. And the patrons hit it. So thank you to everyone who did that because that was made it super happen. fun. We're yeah. all about community goals and you made it happen. Um, we also are going to have in 2021, we're going to have billboards with our mugs on them. Hopefully, yeah. Somewhere in America. Uh, because if you want it in your town, let us know. Let us know. Increase your pledge today. Um, <laughs> No, thank you to all our patrons. We appreciate you. Thank you to everyone who's watched and stuff. Uh, we appreciate everything that you've given us in 2020. We hope that we've given you something back. Uh, it, it, it was a year for the ages, yeah, literally, for yeah. better or worse. But there was some good stuff that came together. There was a lot of great community that we saw happening yeah. as people came together for live streaming. There's a bunch more people live streaming yeah. and people watching and finding people that they really enjoy Check hanging out, out with. Check out Board Game Twitch. It's really Board Game right Twitch now. is where it's at. Literally, so many people come together playing Among Us and doing things, finding ways to play board games, to come together, spend time, even if we can't physically do it. Like That is the human spirit hard yeah. at work right there. Gives me a ton of confidence going into 2021 that we're gonna like figure this crap out, man. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, we just couldn't be uh, happier and, and more grateful for y'all out yeah. there. We really do appreciate it. What a way to end 2020. Woo! Hoo! Yeah, it's that. We'll start playing 2021 games. We got a couple. There's a couple over I here. Know, right, so right. I'm looking at you, 2021. Um, anyway, thank you so much for everyone. Uh, Till next time. Yeah. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph, and that was our favorite games of 2020. Thank you so much for watching that video. We really, really appreciate it. Again, put your top 10 games of the year down in the comments below. Put them down there. If you want to check out that um, that uh, marathon video that we talked about, check out that video up there. We also did our top 100 games of all time. They'll be right down there. Um, we'll, we'll put the 10 to 1, the one that most people want to watch anyway. You found our top 10 games of 2020. Find out our top 10 games of all time now. Of all time down there. Don't forget to subscribe, though. And subscribe. Because well. 2021's got a bunch of stuff coming. You're going to want to be subscribed. Mm -hmm. Turn it on really right will. now. You really will.